This is roughly where we got to last time. It wasn't the final slide, but it was nearly the final slide. Um, we looked at ionization, remember. Uh, we had a low pressure gas in a discharge tube. We <coughs> accelerated electrons through that gas between uh, a negative and a positive um, terminal at either ends, and we were measuring the current. So when we looked at ionization, we had this sudden change of slope uh, at a um, voltage which we termed the uh, ionization potential. And the energy associated with that was just E times V. So that's the ionization energy in electron volts. Right? And there was an example, I think, on a, on a slide of xenon, which is 12.1 electron volts from, from memory. We'll have a look at a few <coughs> other ionization potentials as we go through. So that's the process. That's what we did in terms of ionization. But then we focus in on this little region here um, and started talking about excitation. <coughs> And one of the things I asked you to note was the change of scale. We moved from milliamps to microamps here. So this is a much, much weaker effect in terms of our measured current flowing through this discharge tube. And the other key thing I asked you to notice from here is that it's the dips in this that we're interested in uh, pursuing. And those dips are coming uh, as bytes, if you will, are taken out of the electron energy and therefore its speed as it's moving through uh, this dilute gas. And the reason that's happening uh, is that the electron is in a collision with a gas atom giving up some of its energy, not enough energy to ionize the gas, not enough therefore to kick out another electron from that gas atom, but enough nevertheless to transfer to the electrons uh, um, in that gas atom. And remember, we've been talking exclusively so far about the outermost electrons, right? the ones that are most weakly held by the nucleus of the atom. And for a great deal of what we'll talk about uh, in the next um, few lectures, in fact, we are exclusively talking about those outermost electrons that are most weakly held and we certainly are here so without this process of excitation our curve will come through here and then scream up at ionization and instead we've got these um, these dips taken out of the curve right so actually this is going to turn into uh, the entry level introduction to quantum mechanics because that's essentially what we're now talking about uh, you're going to get to use your first quantum number uh, as of this morning. What we're talking about here is um, something that's unique to each element, and it's the, uh, uh, the electronic structure, the energy levels associated with electrons uh, around these atoms. Right? Now, an, elect uh, an atom, I beg your pardon, in its normal rest state, uh, has electrons which are themselves in something called the ground state, right? They are at their minimum energy uh, level. And that ground state, and this is where the quantum number comes in, uh, is going to be designated as the n equals 1 level. Right? n is our quantum number. But if we put a little bit of energy in, so this is the point at which we get the first dip in the excitation graph that I showed you on the previous slide, uh, then what we've done is to move that electron, this weakly, most weakly bound, outermost electron, remember, we have moved it from its ground state to an excited state. It's gained a little bit of energy from the other electron that's collided with the atom. So if you want to think of it in terms of orbits, what's happened is this electron has now moved to a slightly more distant orbit. Right? A little bit more energy. Exactly like you'd think of satellites in, in Earth orbit. If you want to move them to a higher <coughs> orbit, you have to give them a little bit of extra energy. 
you fire rocket motors and move them up. Right? So it's the same sort of process going on here. The move between the ground state and one of these excited states is called a transition. Pretty prosaic title. It's just a move from one level to another. It's a transition. And actually, as we'll see, a move back again to the ground state is also called a transition. Right? But we'll look at that in more detail as we go on. Now, we can move up from a first excited state, which will be n equals 2, to a second, n equals 3, to a third, to a fourth, and so on, until we get to the ionization potential. Right? At which point, our electron has enough energy now to leave the atom altogether. So that corresponds, in a crude sense, on this numerical scale, uh, to n reaching infinity. In fact, <coughs> distinguishing between n equals 10 and n equals infinity is actually quite hard because the gap is really, really small. Um, but technically that is true. <coughs> so, here's an energy level diagram for hydrogen. We don't have to worry about which electron we're talking about with hydrogen. It's only got one. Um, so by definition, it's the outermost electron. Here's our ground state. This is something on this diagram we will label as having no electron bonds. It's at its lowest energy level. We can define this scale however we want. And you're going to see some diagrams that actually on this scale would have minus 13.6 down <coughs> here and zero up here. Uh, so the scale is actually zero equals ionization energy. And you're going to see graphs of both types. It's entirely the choice of the person drawing the diagram uh, how they put this energy scale in, providing that's consistent within everything they do, it doesn't actually matter. So here's our ground state in n equals 1. The first excited state is actually 10.19 electron <coughs> volts above it. So in other words, the electron coming in in our gas discharge tube, which now has low pressure hydrogen <coughs> in it as a gas, would have to have deposited 10.19 electron volts for the electron associated with the hydrogen atom to reach this first excited level. All right, now there's a key thing here. It can only go from there to there. It can't go to any point in between. That is why this is the beginnings of quantum mechanics. Energy is now quantized. It comes in packets. All right, so there is no state in here that the electron can occupy. So if your electron comes in with 9.12 electron volts, nothing happens. Right? You might give a little bit of motion to the hydrogen atom, you might increase its temperature, but you won't actually have caused any excitation of the electrons. There will be no transition taking place. Yeah? That's quite an important principle to hang on to. But if we put in a bit more energy, if our electron came in not with 10.19 electron volts, but 12.07, we could actually have moved our electron up from its ground state to the n equals 3 state. Right? So all of these levels <coughs> are accessible, depending on the energy of the electron that was coming in, how much energy it departed, um, imparted, I beg your pardon, to the hydrogen atom. Yeah? But it can only be at one of these defined energy levels. Yeah? What's happening to the, uh, the whole thing of the electrons moving up and down? It remains hydrogen. It's just hydrogen with a bit more energy than uh, it normally would have. What defines the state for the first time that's what's going on? So when it goes from N1 to N2, yeah. how do we know what, what is N2? Well, what's it doing that, that makes it N2? Well, um, the electron has a little bit more energy. So if we think about it in that simplistic model of <coughs> proton in the middle, electron in circular orbit going around and we're going to follow that argument through in some detail in a little while um, essentially what we said is that our electron now has enough energy to move away a little bit from the nucleus 
So it's still orbiting, but in that model it's now orbiting at a bigger radius than it was before. So if we have a transition back down again, then we have to get rid of 10.19 electron volts and our electron moves right back to its ground state and its ground state orbit. Does that make sense? Yeah. Good. Good. That's a very sensible question. Um, and that actually is what happens all the time. There will always be a tendency for a system to relax to its lowest energy state. Right? And again, it's you know, if we think of everyday examples, uh, if you let go of something, it drops until it hits a minimum potential energy state. The floor, or a table, or whatever it might be. Um, if you heat something up, the tendency is for it to cool back down again to match the same temperature as its environment. Right? And the same is going to happen in all systems in nature. They will all tend towards the lowest, uh, lowest energy state. <coughs> and when that happens, we give out energy. And as we'll see in a little bit, the way we give out energy uh, is to emit a photon, to emit light, in other words. So we've given energy to our hydrogen atom. We've excited its electron to one uh, level or another. It's going to drop back towards the ground state, either in a single step or in multiple steps, uh, depending on how much it's been excited. Um, and at each of those, it will give out <coughs> the appropriate energy associated with that transition. So if it's coming back from n equals 2 to n equals 1, it's going to give out a photon, a packet of light energy of 10.19 electron volts. If it's dropping from n equals 3 to n equals 2, before it goes back later to n equals 1, then it will give out whatever the difference is between 12.07 and 10.19. Okay? So it's always in these quanta of energy, never in anything else. And that's the key principle here. All right. <clears throat> We're going to stick with hydrogen a lot. This is just a generic diagram, however. Um, to make the point that we don't actually need to be slamming <coughs> accelerated electrons into a, uh, an atom in order to cause an excitation. Any input of energy is capable of producing the same effect. So where a transition back towards the ground state will release energy typically through the emission of a photon, so actually we can use light, we can use a photon to cause the excitation in the first place. So if we could shine light of energy, and we'll get to explore this a little bit later in this lecture and the next, light of energy 10.19 electron volts onto our hydrogen atoms, we could cause that exact same excitation to the N equals 2 level. All we need is a mechanism for transferring that particular quantum <coughs> of energy into our system. Okay. And it's actually most typical that we would use uh, photons rather than electrons. There's lots of ways of doing it, but that is a very, very common way uh, of doing it. In this diagram, perversely, just to um, complicate things for us, it's not showing the outermost <coughs> electron, but it illustrates the principle that we put energy in, and as a result, um, our electron moves out to a slightly higher higher orbit as it were. 